guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews. We got a pretty cool one here today. We're gonna to be reviewing this all new 2022 Chevy Camaro 2SS 1LE. And before we start, I gotta give a huge thank you to Sunset and the rest of the management and staff here at Regal Chevy in Lakeland, Florida for making this review possible. These guys have a really kind staff and a pretty impressive dealership. I'll leave a link to their inventory below. But if you're in the Florida area looking for a new car or truck, I would definitely suggest checking these guys out and ask for Sunset. Throughout automotive history, when most people think of American sports cars, you think big V8 engine and crappy handling. But fast forward to May of 2015, that all changed completely with the sixth generation Camaro. This vehicle came out and it had journalists absolutely astonished when it came to its handling capabilities. And here we have the 2SS 1LE. So the 1LE is the top of the line trim when it comes to handling and performance when it comes to the Camaro. And the 2SS is the highest top of the line trim when it comes to luxury and features until you start getting to the ZL1. Here for 2022, when it comes to the 2SS Coupe, we're gonna get a base price around $42,500. What you get with that, of course, is going to be the extra cooling that you wouldn't get on the LT1 trim. You get the 8-inch color touchscreen display. Uh, we get wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all wireless, as well as a really, really impressive premium Bose audio system. The 2SS, of course, comes with LED headlamps. We're going to get dual zone automatic climate control, uh, full illumination in the interior. It really is a really beautiful interior. We'll check that out in one second. But as far as advanced safety features, the 2SS also comes loaded with those. We get rear park assist, rear cross traffic alert, lane change assist. Uh, we get forward collision alert too, as well as a TPMS, which lets you know when it's time to fill up your tires and an HD super high resolution rear view camera, as well as the camera for the mirror, which is definitely making it super easy to see out of this 2022 2SS 1LE. After all those standard features, the 2SS is gonna come out to about 42,500 bucks. For an additional $7,000, we get this 1LE track performance package. So what we get here are these 20 inch satin graphite forged aluminum rims. We get magnetic ride control, which is an absolutely phenomenal feature for a sports car. It truly makes it feel like you can have two completely different vehicles when you adjust between tour and track. But we also get these Recaro performance front bucket seats, electronic uh, limited slip differential, dual mode performance exhaust comes standard on the 1LE package. Uh, we get these massive six piston Brembos up front with four pistons in the rear. We get a satin black spoiler out rear as well as a wrapped hood. It's gonna be completely satin black. Our front splitter also is gonna be satin black. In the interior, we also get a suede steering wheel and a suede shift knob. These sticky tires up front are absolutely massive and same thing out rear. We'll check them out in one minute. For an additional 1600 bucks, the SS 1LE now does come equipped with an automatic transmission and it does have remote start and for an additional thousand bucks we also get a power sunroof and we'll check that out in the interior but after all these options this 2022 2SS 1LE is going to come out to an MSRP around 53,000 bucks what we get for that price when we come up front you can check out your full LED headlights absolutely gorgeous design I love this black contrast over here too definitely a more aggressive pattern than what we get in the LT1 but the headlights themselves they do say Camaro on them right above or right below the projector and you can take a look at your high beam right next to it with a really nice daytime running strip as well but coming down here we also get a little fog light slash daytime runner right down over here massive massive functional air curtain it's going to be mostly used for aerodynamics nothing's really led out to your brake but still definitely gonna get the job done this front splitter over here also very very aggressive it'd be really nice to get that on the lt1 but down here really love this pattern very nice shape over here it leads directly to your radiator for the 6.2 liter pushrod v8 making 455 horsepower and 455 pound feet of torque enough to get this car to 60 around four seconds but you can take a look at your ss badge right up front we're not going to get a flow tie like you would on the z28 but not a big deal you can take a look at your massive heat extractor as well as this uh, satin black wrapped hood but as far as this wheel and tire setup, this is really where the sports car is going to shine. You're going to have these beautiful 20 inch satin graphite forged aluminum rims. They're going to be wrapped in Goodyear Eagle F1 supercar tires. Dimensions are going to be 28530 ZR20s up front. You can see your massive, massive six piston Brembo 1LE brake caliper with the absolutely enormous rotors but continuing along you got your camaro badge with the red white and blue little emblem as far as these mirrors also going to be wrapped in satin black 
Uh, they're gonna have blind spot monitoring, so not a big deal that the glass is pretty small. As far as the window trim, you're gonna have a nice rubberized material over here, no shiny chrome, and some black trim up top. Definitely making the styling look very aggressive. And as we mentioned, we are gonna have a sunroof on this Camaro. But coming down here for the rear wheel and tire setup, this is also where this car really, really shines. You got these massive, massive rims with a four piston brake caliper out back. Uh, as far as the dimensions back here, we're gonna have 30530 ZR20s, uh, Goodyear Eagle F1 Supercar 3 tires. Really, really sticky compound. As you see, not a whole lot of tread uh, block, so there's gonna be a ton of rubber touching the pavement at all times. You got the reflector back here. We got the smoked out taillights. Definitely looks very aggressive, similar to what we get with the RS package on the LT1. You see your SS badge back here, as well as the full parking sensors over here as well. Uh, you got the dual exhaust tips. They're gonna definitely sound really good as well as your specific one le satin black spoiler and a little carbon flash trim for this third brake light and your bow tie right down here but we also mentioned that we're gonna have the camera for the mirror that's gonna be housed right over here for the antenna right up top of your camaro but we'll take a step back you can take a look at the rear styling one last time on this 2ss 1le and let's start this car up and hear how she sounds All right, guys, so that was, of course, the sound of the 6.2 liter pushrod V8 sold by GM for this Camaro 2SS 1LE. So we can pop this hood up, take a look at the setup. As you see, similar to the LT1, you got the cross supports for the strut tower to the chassis, definitely making it much stiffer and a much better handling platform. But very similar to the LT1, we're still gonna be making 455 horsepower and 455 pound-feet of torque. With these sticky 305 tires out rear, we can expect zero to 60 to be around four seconds, so really, really fast sports car we can shut this thing up right over here take a step back you can take a look at the front styling one last time unfortunately the daytime running strips only light up when the car is in drive but hope you still pick up the front styling unbelievably aggressive i definitely think the front end looks much more aggressive than my lt1 especially with these really beefy wheel and tire setups but we can take a look at the interior on this 2SS1 Elite, because this is really also where this car is gonna shine. Up top, we're gonna have soft touch materials for where your arm will often rest. It's gonna be stitched contrasted leather. So very, very well needed upgrade versus the LT1 because the LT1's door panel is just gonna be completely, completely hard plastic. Down here, we're gonna have very similar uh, setup to the LT1 where this is gonna be some faux leather trim. Very soft armrests over here. We got some storage compartment right over here. Power one touch for the driver and a front passenger. We got the four-way adjustable mirrors right over here and a little bit of aluminum with a nice illuminated strip on the inside. I'm not sure if you can pick it up right now, but once we take a step inside and it gets a little bit darker, I'm sure it'll be easier to notice. You got your power trunk release right here. Bose premium audio system definitely sounds really good. A little bit of storage right here, but again, you're probably not gonna be able to fit a sandwich in there. Probably reserved for just snacks. But taking a step inside, we do get an illuminated Camaro nameplate with the red, white, and blue badge. Right over here, as far as these seats, they're gonna be really, really comfortable Recaros. They're gonna be labeled Recaro right up top. Uh, the perforation continues all the way to the headrest. That really you don't see very often. Very, very impressive seat. Really prominent bolstering too. And even though the bolstering definitely protrudes a lot, it doesn't poke into your ribs. So if you're a bigger dude, if you're like 220 plus pounds, I wouldn't necessarily say that these are gonna be uncomfortable Recaro seats. But down here, even for the bottom portion, extremely supportive. And as you see, the perforation for the suede Alcantara definitely continues and it's unbelievably soft. One of the more comfortable seats in the business. But we could take a step inside and really check out this interior. We could turn the vents down by a couple so you guys can hear a little bit better. But the first thing we notice is the steering wheel. It's gonna be suede Alcantara wrapped. Not quite as thick as the LT1, but basically right up there, the shape is gonna be the exact same with a really nice 10 and 2 bolstering notch, very good 10 and 2 location, and just about perfect for the 9 and 3. But the flat bottom continues. We got the SS badge right down here. It'd be nice to get the 1LE badge, but still pretty cool. We got the skip controls. We can adjust the volume, radar, cruise control settings. You got the front collision assist and the heated steering wheel. Uh, the silver aluminum trims and are outlined the steering wheel controls on both sides. You can adjust the infotainment right over here, voice commands, and you can hang up your phone right over here. But as far as the infotainment setup, it's an absolutely gorgeous digitally illuminated display. You got the digital speedometer, you got your oil temperature, coolant temperature, gas level, and the voltometer on the side. As far as the gauges over here, we got a 6,500 RPM tachometer, 200 on the dash. This vehicle doesn't have a 200 mile an hour top speed, but it's pretty cool to see 200 miles an hour on your 
speedometer. But as far as the infotainment adjustments, uh, we can adjust between a digital speedometer. We can go over here and take a look at the overall information. Here you can see your performance pages, such as the oil temperature. We can also go down and take a look at oil pressure, uh, battery voltage. You can see the trans fluid temperature, uh, tire temperature. It says normal wheel slip percentage. This shows you the information with your electronic limited slip. But going back over here, we can go back up top and just see the overall information, such as the digital speedometer. You can see your trip A, trip B, and down here you can see the fuel range. You can see whether or not you're using eight or four cylinders. You can see your instant fuel economy as well. Right here, you can see your remaining oil life. You have the tire pressure information for the TPMS, lap timer, and that's about it. So right up back, we can look at the digital speedometer. We can take a look at the navigation information. So that's pretty cool. This vehicle is currently in demo mode. So we're not going to be able to see all this right now. But anyway, you can see the phone settings as well as the overall options. So here we have launch control. We're, of course, not going to be testing that out with this dealership Camaro. But we can see the standard settings, standard theme, and the overall information you can add performance pages too so if you want to look at the zero to 60 timers uh, quarter mile timers that's all available on this car but we can go back to the information uh, screen my personal favorite just look at the digital speedometer at all times as far as the wiper stock or the headlight stock of course we get automatic headlights the turn signals feel super high quality definitely a thumbs up to gm definitely very very solid click i know most people don't care about that but it's gonna be something you're pressing very often so if you're spending fifty thousand bucks on a sports car it's really nice to have the high quality materials where it counts but we're not gonna get rain sensing wipers, unfortunately, that would be kind of appreciated for the 2SS trim, but not a big deal. You simply just turn the wiper stock when it starts to rain harder. But paddle shifters behind the steering wheel, they're just gonna be plastic, but they respond just about instantly. So you wouldn't necessarily need to go with the manual transmission if you want an engaging drive with this 1LE because these paddle shifters are just about perfect. But right over here, you can have a heads up display. That's a nice feature on a 2SS. Not quite sure if I can pick it up with the camera angle, but it is a very nice, heads up display. Uh, next one, you got your overall information as well as the interior brightness right over here. Uh, the air vent, similar to the LT1, you simply turn it to open and close. Dashboard, everything's gonna be just a hard plastic. It would be nice to get a soft touch dashboard for the 2SS2, but not a big deal. No one's gonna be touching a dashboard in this car. We mentioned we are gonna get the camera mirror right now. We're just looking at it through the glass. We can press this button though, and now we have the camera mirror. This is a fantastic feature, especially for a vehicle that a lot of people have trouble seeing out of because you simply press this button and you can see just about everything that you wouldn't be able to have seen before just staring at the frame. But anyway, we can leave this thing on like this. I personally think it looks pretty cool. But as far as this infotainment display, similar to what you would get on the tech package on the Camaro LT1, uh, you got your eight inch screen. It fits this little area perfectly. It is illuminated on the outside too. Not quite sure if you could pick out that little red strip but it's gonna be running along your interior right over here. Very nice. But as far as the setup, you can have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and they are wireless. Uh, you can take a look at all the settings right here. We're not gonna have uh, the navigation set up right now, but this vehicle is equipped with navigation. You can see the songs and audio settings right over here. But you can press this button. You can go home at all times. You can skip, you have your volume controls and they are very well weight resisted right over here. As far as the controls down here, we have heated and cooled seats. It gets pretty hot down here in Florida. So the cooled seats are always appreciated for higher trim cars. But similar to the LT1, you simply turn this to adjust the temperature. But unlike the LT1, you can't turn this to adjust the vent speed. These are gonna have dual mode, dual zone, automatic climate control. So both of these adjust the temperature on both specific sides. If you wanna adjust the, the vent speed, you're gonna have to press these two buttons right over here, right next to your defrosters. But as far as the shifter, it's gonna be controlling your 10 speed automatic transmission. It's gonna be all suede Alcantara wrapped. Very nice quality. Uh, as far as the backup camera, you guys can check it out right over here, super super high resolution backup camera we do get guidance markers and trajectory and one thing i noticed too the steering definitely feels a little bit heavier than the lt1 a little bit more on center probably something to do with those sticky 285 tires up front but we can put this thing back into park uh, you do have manual shift modes you pull back to downshift you push forward to upshift not the proper directions but again we're going to have these absolutely phenomenal paddle shifters so i personally don't think it's a very big deal but anyway, continuing back here, we got the 12-volt adapter, 12-volt outlet right over here. The armrest, it is not soft. Definitely a thumbs down for Chevy. Probably my only thumbs down with this car. The armrest could definitely use a little bit more padding. The leather, I definitely like the leather. The quality of the materials is definitely there. It's just the padding. I would like there to be a little bit more for the armrest. But as far as the center console, you can see not the most space, but I'd say you probably fit uh, probably two, three cans. You can probably get some snacks right here in this little section. So no, not the most space. If you want the space, that's why I'd suggest checking out this glove box over here, which is massive. I'd say you probably fit uh, 15, 20 license plates in here with no issues. Really spacious glove box. And you get some leather stitch trim right above it. 
But as we mentioned, we are gonna get a power sunroof. You simply press this button and the sunroof opens right up. The shade is gonna be manual. You're gonna have to open it up yourself and the sunroof doesn't open all the way open. But anyway, we can poke our way out of here. Absolutely beautiful day right now in Lakeland, Florida. It's sunny in 75. But to close the sunroof, you can't just press it one time. It's not a power one touch. You gotta keep your finger on the button, but it closes right up. We can shut the shade right over here. But that's about it for this interior. We can check out this window sticker really quick. You can take a look at the standard features on a 2022 Camaro 2SS, and you do get quite a few of them. Uh, but the base price on the 2SS is gonna be around $42,500. The 1LE package is gonna run you about an additional seven. Uh, we are gonna get $1,600 automatic transmission and a $1,000 sunroof. After almost $10,000 in options and a $1,200 destination charge, you can expect the final MSRP to just be a tick over 53,000 bucks. So pretty solid value considering this is a fully, fully loaded, track ready Camaro 2SS. But anyway, you were also gonna get these little pockets over here, soft touch material for your knee will often hit. So they really thought it through. All the areas where you're gonna be touching are definitely a very high quality material. Uh, that's about it for the front seat, guys. Let's check out the back, see how much space is offered back there, as well as the overall quality of the materials. All right, guys, taking a step inside of this 2022 2SS 1LE, uh, you can see how much space the front passenger would have uh, before I reference the back seat. But as you can see, more than enough space. I'm six feet tall and plenty of legroom. My knees are not hitting this little center area. So more than enough space up front. Let's hop out back and see how much space uh, the rear passenger would have with the front passenger with those settings. So you simply pull this latch. It's kind of heavy to pull forward compared to the LT1. Definitely a heavier seat. But taking a step back here, we can get our feet set up. Not the most foot space. As you can see, my feet are really under the seat and my knees are way into the seat as well. And compared to the LT1, I feel like I have less headroom. My head is literally in the ceiling. Not a whole lot of space for me here at all. But good thing I came back here because I didn't notice that there was a wireless charging pad right over here. Great feature, but overall space, there really isn't a whole lot for somebody that's six feet tall uh, sitting behind pretty conservative seat settings too. So overall, the back seat area is gonna be basically reserved for small kids, uh, people under five feet tall, or just people that you don't really like. But we can hop out of here. Uh, it's not gonna be the easiest process because it's a pretty tight squeeze back here for someone that's six feet tall. But once we get out of here, we can put the seat right back to where it was, shut this door and check out this trunk real quick and then take this 2022 2SS 1LE out for a drive. So we pop this trunk, as you can see, same opening as the LT1, really not a whole lot of space. But as you see inside over here, it does go in very deep and it does go pretty far in too. So you are gonna have pretty solid trunk space, definitely competitive with the segment. It's just the opening itself is gonna be a little bit smaller. But shutting this thing up right over here, we can take a step back. You can hear those exhaust tips rumbling back here. But let's take this 2SS 1LE out for a drive. All right, guys, now we've just about seen everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this 2022 2SS 1LE. Let's take it out for a drive, and we're gonna start off in tour, transition in the sport, and then try out track and see what the overall differences are. But stepping right out here in tour, this is gonna be the lightest steering mode, and even in tour, I feel like the steering has better feel than my uh, 2021 Camaro LT1. So that's probably attributed to uh, these 285 sticky tires up front, and the throttle feels very, very sensitive, even in tour mode. We'll see how that changes as we switch between tour, uh, sport, and track. But just on the gas, it definitely has a very solid response. But all right, stepping out here in tour mode, we lean into it about halfway right here. Ooh. Yeah, this thing can really, really move. We get to highway speeds uh, basically effortlessly. We did lean into it um, about like 40% of the way. And it wasn't the most sensitive. We went to about 3,000 RPM, 3,500, but still more than enough power, even in tour mode. We'll put it into sport in one second and see what the overall differences are once we step out onto this road. And I'll catch back with you in one second. But all right, guys, taking a step out onto this road in sport mode, the exhaust definitely gets a little bit louder in sport with this dual mode exhaust, but we got a set of train tracks right over here. Yeah, the magnetic ride definitely stiffens up the suspension too. But stepping out over here, just in regular automatic mode, we got some solid twisties over here. Wow, the steering is way sharper than my LT1. And this is only sport, we also have track. Wow, yeah, that's pretty impressive, but... This, this is, yeah, this is only in sport mode, and we're not even coming close to pushing this vehicle's handling capabilities. Wow, this thing is like on rails. 
I thought my LT1 was unbelievably impressive when it came to handling. Yeah, this 1LE package really, really gives you some well-needed performance upgrades. But uh, we got a little bit of open road. We'll take a look at how this vehicle can accelerate off the line in one second right over here. And we'll try it out in track too. But right over here, put it into track mode, slow down right over here. And let's test out this vehicle's acceleration off the line. We're not gonna floor it, but about like halfway lean into it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this thing can really, really fly. Ooh, hope you guys can pick it up for the camera. This is a really fast car, but we'll try out these manual shifting controls in track mode. Throwing it in, wow. Steering is. into regular drive you can still hear that exhaust rumbling and in track mode the transmission is definitely downshifting for you so we can put it back into just regular tour mode and uh, just calm down and see how this vehicle just performs for daily acceleration as you see the exhaust is a lot quieter and I do hear a little bit more road noise with these um, Goodyear tires versus what like I have in my LT1 you definitely hear a little bit more through the road but it's still definitely nothing that's like unbearable or anything like that uh, but we'll pull over to the side over here. I'll throw in the POV hat so you guys can get a little bit of a first-hand look driving this 2SS 1LE. But I'll tell you right now, this is a really, really impressive car. I hope you can pick it up in the camera. But, all right, guys, stepping back out here in the 2SS 1LE. We'll start off in tour mode, as you see. Very quiet, very smooth acceleration. But even at low speeds, we definitely hear a little bit more road noise versus what we had in the LT1. But still definitely not unbearable. Once we get a little bit of open road, I'll try to give you guys a little first-hand look at this vehicle's performance. I'm not sure if you can pick up the heads-up display, but the heads-up display does give you a little G-force monitor so you can see. But right now, we just hit 0 0.16 in that slow little turn going about 25 miles an hour. But I'll catch back with you guys once we got a little bit of open road. But all right, guys, we'll try this car out in um, track mode. I'll show you guys how this vehicle can accelerate in track. We'll put it into the manual shift modes. Uh, we're currently in second gear on the gas. Oh. Yeah, this thing can really move. And downshift, throwing it in. Those crackles are really something else. And yeah, this thing in real beast, guys. Downshift, <laughs> throwing it in. Wow, it is just so flat, so composed in track, and the exhaust sounds just absolutely incredible i think it sounds better than the lt1 i think there's more crackles and pops i think the track mode opens it up even further than the sport mode does for the dual mode in the lt1 so really impressive sports car guys really impressive i wasn't expecting it to be this much better than my lt1 but it really is it feels like two completely different vehicles at least with this uh, magnetic ride control because in tour mode it's a very soft vehicle very comparable to what my lt1 feels like but once you start uh, going to sport going to track it's just a whole, whole nother beast. Well, we got a couple more twisties right over here. I hope you can pick up just how flat this vehicle really is. And in track, uh, we're going to be losing our overdrive gears. We're currently in um, third gear, going around 26 miles an hour, sitting around 2,100 RPMs. So if you want to calm the transmission down, we can put it right back into sport. So sport mode is going to be a balance between, obviously, tour and track. It's going to give you stiffer handling, stiffer suspension, but it's going to still allow you to keep the overdrive gears for the transmission. But overall, super impressive vehicle. We'll step out into this highway on the gas. Really fast car, guys. This thing can really, really move. We don't have to push it a whole lot farther than that. And when you do lean into it, the transmission definitely holds the revs even in sport. So we'll put it back into tour and cruising on this highway going about 50 miles per hour. Um, again, you hear a little bit of tire noise, but the wind noise is basically non-existent. And this sound system sounds real good, so any noise that you want to drown out, you can simply turn up the volume a little bit and should definitely do the job. But other than that, super impressive vehicle. This is one of my favorite cars that I've ever reviewed in this channel. And with a base price only sitting around 50,000 bucks, I think it's a great, great value, especially considering this is the 1LE track package. You have the upgraded cooling, you have super beefy tires. This is a true, true track car. And with the great features such as cooled seats, heated steering wheel, heated seats, 
you have unbelievable luxury and features in this vehicle so it's not just a track car it's a great great best of both worlds daily driver other than that guys huge thanks to regal chevy here in lakeland florida for making this review possible great staff unbelievable group of guys with a really impressive showroom and inventory too i'll leave a link to their inventory below i'll definitely suggest anybody in the florida area looking for a new car or truck to definitely check these guys out other than that guys thank you so much for watching i truly had a great time making this video um really impressive vehicle one of my favorites that i've ever driven in my life um, if you're new to this channel please subscribe if you've already subscribed thank you so much you guys know uh, none of this would be possible without you i really appreciate all of you for your constant support but if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe leave a like too it really helps me out the youtube algorithm that's how these videos get promoted to new people uh, leave a comment let me know what you like let me know what you don't like leave a comment let me know if there's any specific vehicles you'd like to see reviewed in this channel and i'll definitely try to get those videos for you guys as soon as possible but other than that thank you again so much for watching and i hope all of you have a great day